Right gang. Hello, we've got a biggie for you today. We've got a good one. We're doing a clutch. Okay, so not much time to waste. Um, I'll quickly say hello to all the regulars. How you doing? Thanks for the support. Loving it. Volunteerist mechanics and as we've got a big job on today and because we've got some nosy neighbours that don't like me working on the drive um, We have had to put a little sign on There we are, I'll show you that, see if it's focusing There you go, that's my little cheeky sign So that gives me a little bit of cover from the neighbours Because this is under, under volunteerist uh, principles, which it is this is my friend's car actually, it's um, a very good friend of mine, so it's, yep, yeah, parts, that's it, alright, so, we'll crack on. So we're doing a clutch today, so if you want to take this on, you can, I'm not using any power tools, I'm not using um, any uh, hydraulic lifts or anything like that, any garage tools at all, I'm using jacks, axles, and I'll t a few tools that I'll show you, I'm going to do this uh, job in parts. So the first part I want to show you in this part is the um, uh, the disassembling of the passenger side or the near side uh, strut wheel base. So basically, I'll stop rambling. We're taking to part. We're taking to pieces this bit. Okay. But there's a couple of things I want to um, explain first. Doing a clutch. Is, is 90, 95% preparation of the job. Okay, you want plenty of room underneath because you're going to be um, you've got to get around the whole underside of the gearbox to get all the bolts out. Um, you've got to have a lot of clearance. You want you're going to have jacks under there. Um, I haven't got a trolley. Well, I have got a trolley jack, but it's broken. A trolley jack would be perfect with this. But anyway, I won't go on about that because I've, I've got limited time. So. You need lots of clearance underneath. That's that's so important. Um, this this job's about angles. It's about preparation, like I say, um, and just making the job as easy as possible. Because this is a big job. Um, there's a few bits to remember, but it's not it's not technical at all. Do you know what I mean? It's just nuts and bolts. That's all it is. It's nuts and bolts. It's on and off. There's no to it. As long as you can remember where your bolts go. <laughs> Um, you're all right. You're all right. So, prepping the job first. Axle stands, yeah. And you can. See, I've left that wheel on that side, and you can see how high I've raised it. I mean, it's a good, what, two, three inches off the floor there. Okay. So, and then we've got axle stands there. Now, very important to position your axle stands as far back as you can, because, like I say, you're going to get jacks under here. I'm sorry, you can't. Sorry, there's not much light on there. But you're going to get jacks under there and everything. So you want these axle stands out of your way. Now don't put them too far back, where is the, uh, the centre of balance, the centre of gravity on your car kind of um, it goes, goes in front of your jack because then that will squish you. Um, and that's not good, we don't want you squishing, we want to look after you, you good steamians. So there you go, axle stands, um, on almost all cars you've got these, uh, I'm sorry you can't see too much there, but you've got two runners where my axle stands are, they're on the two main runners or good as if you want it's, it's the chassis of the car um they're on the chassis rails there's one on each side they're the biggest uh, chunkiest parts of the underside of the body you can't miss them put them as put them on onto those put your axle put your axle stands under those and put them as far back as possible you know within safety okay all right so in really to give you a bit of perspective of where i've put mine there's the back of the wheel arch and there's my axle stand, and you don't want it really any further back than that. Okay, right, safety bit done. Okay, always put your wheel underneath because you want to, you want a last, uh, you want a cat's life if it does go wrong. Okay, all right, chuck on the back wheel. There you go. Uh, anything else to tell you before prepping the job? Um, quick slurp of tea. Oh, yeah, tea. Yeah, there you go. Tea. You've got a tea. All right, <laughs> right, so we're ready. We've prepped the job. We've got the, the car jacked up. Everything's onky dory Wheels there for a cat's life. Axle stands. Um, I've used a little bottle jack to do that with, which is there. Um, you can use a scissor jack. I don't like the scissor jacks. Best off is to have a trolley jack. 25 pound from any kind of parts place or helpers or whatever. It'll do you. Um, right, okay. Prepping this job. So before you raise the car up, sorry to say this now, but before you raise the car up, I should have said this before, sorry. <sighs> right. Before you do anything, you have to slacken off, not undo, 
slacken off, so that's a quarter of a turn, okay? The wheel nuts on each side and the hub nut. This is very important, all right? Some of these hub nuts also have left hand and right hand thread, so be careful, have a look at the threads um, and see which way they, they turn. Um, if they, s well I'm not going to start going into the threads because it's going to take me too long, the battery's going to run out. Um, some, some threads go left and right, most don't, there you go. Right, anyway, there's your hub nut, while it's on the floor you're going to want to undo all of this or slacken off, so a quarter of a turn, okay? Um, this one in particular, it don't matter how much you slacken off, you can take that all the way off, it doesn't matter because you're going to do it, you get, yeah. But the wheel nuts, importantly, only a quarter of a turn, right? Then you jack your car up, right? And then once your car's all jacked up, yeah, your wheels aren't going to turn while you're trying to undo the wheel nuts and all the rest of it. That's the point of that. So you, the weight of your car holds this steady so you can actually undo these nuts because they're quite tight. So there you go, we've done that, we've got this far. So that's all these done, you take your wheel off, okay? And this is what you're presented with. Now, normally you'd have the caliper. I hope you can see that. See if I can get my uh, torch on the go. Ah, there we go, a bit light. Right, there's the caliper. I've hung mine up there on a cable tie, out of the way. Now that belonged on there. Uh, there's a brake video. I'm going to do this one properly. I know I've been a bit slack on the others. I'm going to do this one properly and add some videos into this. You need to look at the brake video, the, the um, changing brake pads video, to see how to remove this caliper. It's very simple. It's just two bolts. One there, one there. Yeah, and then the caliper comes off. Your brake pads, there we go, there's my brake pads. Always check your brake pads, you know, make sure the linings aren't lifting off the off the metal backings. Give these bits a clean before you put them in, give them a scrape with a screwdriver. Um, also, wire brush, hello, my toothless wire brush. Um, always wire brush up all your bolts before you loosen them off, um, always helps. Clean the threads off, always helps Helps removal. Right, okay, so we've got that far now. So you've took your caliper off, you've took your brake pads out, you've uh, tied your caliper, your brake caliper, get my torch again, you've tied your brake caliper to the top of your strut, okay? So that's out of the way. Now, you need to uncouple this ABS cable. Now, my bolt won't come out, so I can't take the ABS sensor out, and most of them will be like that. Normally, it's not even worth trying, so I would suggest you just uncouple the wire from all its little buckles that are on here and give it lots of slack because you're going to be pulling this forward, okay? Right, okay, so back on with prepping the job. We've moved the caliper out of the way. Now, there's a split pin in there when that started. That's why this is castellated. There's a little split pin would sit in a hole, which, in fact, I'll take this off. little hole there, split pin goes in there, you have to take that out first, sometimes they're rusted in, bit of WD-40, if not just snap them out and poke them through, um, you'll always get them out. Uh, that is a 17mm I believe, I'm going to show you the tools list anyway in a, in a mo, I'm going to give you a little thing, but I want, what I want to do here is um, show you how to get these ball joints um, off, because it's a bit brutal, but you have to, so I'm going to set the camera up, and I'll I'm hoping that you can see that. Where's... Right, okay, sorry about this guys, just having a bit of trouble setting the camera up and getting the light for that one. I'm gonna have to do this from over the top. Hey, up, you alright? Right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna tap this. How you doing, you alright? Yeah, do you alright? Just did a bit of a vid. Oh, uh, I, 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 it's um, just a project I'm doing, volunteerist project. Yeah, it's just so I can work on my drive, basically. Why? Uh, yeah, I'll have to explain another time. You're right, I'm just doing a bit of a tutorial vid with it. I'll explain another okay. time, though. See you in a bit. There you go, my nice uh, nosy neighbours. Anyway, right, okay, so getting this... Um, Getting this ball joint off, here we go. Right, so this is how you do it. You want a little hammer like that, yeah? Not a massive one like that, yeah? You want what's called a, a tapping hammer, a toffee hammer. Maybe a little bit bigger than that, but what you've got to do is you've got to strike this metal casting around it. Leave the nut on so you don't miss and bust the threads, all right? Very important. So leave that nut on, and then you want to just strike that. 
Okay. And there you go. Can you see? That's now come loose out of there. Sorry about the noise, guys. I, hope you turn, I should have warned you to turn your, um, your sound down there. There you go. That's that out. Actually, track rod, actually steering track rod that we've just took off there. Little metal tray, always comes in handy. Only about a fiver from Halfords. Um, keep your bolts tidy and safe. So that's the track rod off. Um, these were really tight to undo. So um, be prepared to, to jump on them. Yeah, it's not that you haven't got much chance of them snapping really, so go for it. Um, yeah, so undo those two bolts because you're going to need to do that undo um, to take this down. So we've done that, track rod's done, the top two bolts are done. Um, we've prepped that. Right, I'll give you a quick show because the battery's started to run out now. This is your tools that you'll need to do this, what we've just done. You'll need um, a punch and a hammer, and that is to knock back this, knock back your drive shaft. You need a punch and a hammer, wire brush, 18mm, that's for, oh in fact no, we don't need an 18mm actually. They wasn't 18 mils. It's a 19 mil for these here, and you'll need your 19 mil power bar and socket. Um, a set of impact sockets are ideal for it. You'll need a half inch power bar, half inch ratchet, little six inch extension helps. You don't exactly need it. Little quarter drive set's always good um, to help do the calipers and the smaller bolts. Um, da -da 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 -da, you want a 30 mil, 30 millimeter. Make sure it's a, it's a 12 sided socket. You've got to have a 12 sided, not a six sided, because the 30 mil six sided, like these are, yeah. You see the six sides? They won't fit on that. That won't that won't fit. You get 30 sided, but it's got to be both. Uh, sorry, 30 millimeter socket. But it's got to be 12 sided. Okay. Half inch drive. There you go. That's all that is. That's half inch, and that's my drive. That's there you go. There's the drive of my ratchet. Um, so you want 17, that's for the track rod, 21's for the wheel nuts, 19's for your strut bolts, uh, I think we're done there, yeah, a pair of little mole grips for the split pin, uh, as you've seen a little hammer there, your jacks, your axle stands, right, I think we're cool there, I think that's kind of sussed that bit, right, I'm going to try and stick this on a stand and quickly show you how to push this back in the hope that I can do all this in one video. Do you know what? Do you know what? I need some new kit guys, I really do. I need to get my set, I need to get my uh, my stuff together. Oh, see I'm trying, I've not swore I've not swore once and I won't. I'll be a good boy today. This video is important because I want this to be for everyone. For the kids. Alright, there we go. Alright, brilliant. Okay, so now it's time to, I think you can see the strut, well I'm taking these two, if you can't see, I'm taking the two strut bolts out. Okay, now be a little bit careful because it will be a bit spring loaded here. So, just rock it, pull your bolts out, give them a wiggle, there you go, there's one bolt in your tray. Right, next one, give a wiggle, be careful because once you, obviously once you take this out, this is going to come forward. Okay, but you'll feel that happening anyway. Oh, by the way, the only reason I've got BBC Radio 1 on is because um, Plan B's on soon. Otherwise this would not be on. <laughs> Plan B's on live soon and he had not to put a record out for a while and I'm a bit of a fan of Plan B. So, anyway, <laughs> I digress. Right, okay, so there you go. That's what happens there. Woo, look at that, it's wobbly. There you go, I'll give you a little look at what we've done there. There you go, that's that. So we took that bit off and that makes that all wobbly, yeah, and come out. So that's why we've slackened that wire off. Okay, so now we can take that nut off. Okay, I've already done that on the floor, remember? But we'll take that off now. Now, this is where you need your punch. At the start, that will be solid in there, so you might need to shock it. Do not hit that with a hammer because you'll bust the threads up and you won't get your nut back on. You need a punch that fits in the middle there, that's why there's a dent in that. Yeah, okay, punch in the middle there, tap. And then with your thumb on the middle, you can push that out. And what you're doing is, yeah, good, good, battery's not run out, that's good. What you're doing is, you're pushing this out, okay? There you go, and you're pushing your drive shaft out. So let me see if I can leave you there. There we go. 
Ta da! There we go. Drive shaft out. Right. Now, again, sorry to do this to you, but at least it's on the first video. I'll, I'll, I'll mark all my mistakes up. Drain the gearbox oil. Because when you pull this drive shaft out sometimes, or at least have a bucket underneath, when you drain, the, when you pull this drive shaft out sometimes, it will come out of the gearbox end as well, because we're going to pull this out anyway. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's best just to drain the gearbox oil beforehand, because you can go, you can have a spill. But anyway, there we go. See? Right. Good stuff, isn't it? Easy. Now we've just took down the near side hub. We've took down the near side hub now. We've took off the drive shaft. Um, everything's hunky-dory. We're all secure. Everything, everyone's safe. We've all got ten fingers. Hopefully. All right, let's leave you there a second. Oh, hey, oh I moved the wrong bit. There we go. Lean you in there. Okay. There's a good view. Right, okay. Just want to show you something quickly. That ridge there, that's the ABS ring. And that's the in the ABS video that I was showing you. Uh, I think it was my last video. This is the castellated ring that, re that reads off the sensor. In fact, there you go. There's your sensor. Wiggle, wiggle. Oh, that's come out finally. All oh, right, that's good. Yeah, good, good. That's come out finally. All right, there's my ABS sensor. Cheeky, cheeky. All right, and that's it. That reads off that ring there. Okay, so when that turns, that reads ridge, not ridge, ridge, not ridge. Okay, there you go. Just wanted to show you that. It's nice to nice to see that out in the open. I'm going to take this camera down the scrapyard one day. I'm going to show you the. I'll do some proper videos then. You'll see the inner workings of engines then, you will. Um, right, I don't think there's anything... I always check your CV boots here. Always check your universal CV boots. Because if they if they leak any oil or grease, you're going to... Basically, well, they're going to dry up and all the bearings are going to start cracking. And you'll get an awful noise when you're turning. Okay. Right. Um, oh, wow, the other thing we're going to have to do while we're in here, while we're in this station, is that cover there. Um, there'll just be a, there'll either be a couple of screws, Phillips screws, or some kind of plastic clips. But we're going to take that off because the gearbox is going to come and drop down on the floor here. Uh, right, I think. Now, uh, I'll, I'll show you how to take the drive shaft off on the next video. All right. Uh, I should have done this on, on this one, but I haven't drained the oil off, and I think the battery will run out. It run out before I get a chance to do that. So I think that's a pretty comprehensive video of uh, dismantling the near side and getting ready to remove your clutch. Right, that's it, yeah, that's cool. I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed with that. Right, gang. <laughs> One take again, eh? One take, Rebel Dan. Right, <laughs> sorry, I'll stop blowing my own trumpet now. Uh, right, okay, yep, yep, we're done, we're done, we're done. Oh, by the way, this is what happens when you get gorillas on the job that don't do it properly. Oh, it's not showing up. Let me see. Where's my torch? Where's my torch gone? That's a shame. I wonder if I can see that, if you can turn it. No, it won't focus in. It's a shame. What I, what I wanted to show you was, there's some <laughs> some butcher, the last time he put this drive shaft in. Right? If you see there, that hole's splined. Right, okay. So what some butcher's done when he's put this back in last time, he's not lined this up, and he's just slammed it. And what? And he's well, this has got four grooves, four lines down the threads there that I'm going to have to repair. So I'm going to have to repair those threads and dress them up a little before this goes back in. Anyway, I don't know why I'm finishing this with a moan. That was silly, really. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to finish this on a happy note. It's been a good video. Um, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Right, I think I'm done. Oh, um, anti-roll bar bushes. Um, if you ain't got an anti-roll bar, you coke, your car goes around the corner like a, a Cadillac, like a boat. Um, these are your anti-roll bars and these are the bushes. These need changing on this one because look, they're rotten. They are rotted, rotted out. Yeah. But this girl says she has a competition with her dad going around this certain corner in my local town. And it is a good corner, but she says she uh, they try and top it out and, and see who can have a competition, see who can go around fast enough. And I think this is the results. Plus age. But anyway, uh, <laughs> jokes and fun aside, naughty girl. Sure she does it within the speed limits. Right, okay, gang. See you later. It's been fun. I'll come back for part two where we're going to do uh, the top of the engine. Now, what you've just done here, it's always good to do to the other side as well. You don't have to do all that on the other side because you can get away 
with not even touching the other side and leaving it all in one piece and I'll show you the trick later all right okay but anyway you don't need to tear that side down not necessarily you can if you want to and do the same pull the drive shaft out if you want go for it it does make the job a lot easier all right in the end but I'm not gonna okay because we like to do things different uh, <laughs> uh, da -da 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 -da. right I think that's it yes yes cool woohoo right see you later gang see you for part two when we're gonna dismantle the top half of the engine uh, well, not the top half of the engine, top half of the gearbox. I'm going to prep the top job, then we're going to prep the bottom job, and then we're going to, yeah, we're going to start taking the engine mounts off and taking the gearbox out, and I'll show you how the clutch works, and yeah, we'll see what's wrong with this one as well. Okay, see you later. Bye bye.